Hi, I'm Dr. Bridget Behe. Welcome to Flowers in the Classroom. Today we're going to learn about the different parts of a flower. Let's start at the top of this diagram with the colorful petals. The purpose of the petals is to attract the insect or animal pollinators to the flower. We also see next is the female part of the flower called the pistil. Now the pistil is comprised of three things, the stigma, the style, and the ovary. The stigma is the uppermost part of the pistil, usually where the pollen is attached to or lands on the, the part of the flower to be pollinated. The pollen then travels down the style into the ovary where the seed is formed. The male parts of the flower are diagrammed over here. The male part of the flower is called the stamen. The stamen is comprised of two parts, the anther where the pollen forms and the filament that attract, attaches the stamen to the flower itself. Beneath that are the sepals or the dark green petal-like structures that hold the entire flower together. Now one thing that you might do to reinforce the different parts of the flower is to take the students outdoors. If they can go outside, you might have them identify different flowers, draw the size, the shape, and the color of those flowers while identifying the flower parts. If you can't go outdoors, why not look online or through some books or catalogs, finding some flowers where they can again draw the shape, the size, and label the different parts of the flower. Another exercise you can do is to buy some fresh cut flowers. You might want to have students measure the length and the width of those flowers using a ruler. You could also have them dissect that flower, taking it apart and identifying the colorful petal, the male parts and the female parts, and the green sepals. After the students are done with that exercise, you might have them go through and compare the different shapes and sizes of flowers that they've collected. You might have them look at the different flower parts through a magnifying glass and compare how the different structures appear on the different kinds of flowers. For this and other lessons, visit flowersintheclassroom.com.